and um, I'm going there for my PhD on clinical psychology. So what that basically means is that I had and will have 10 years of schooling after receiving a high school diploma. So it takes a really long time, but it ends up being rewarding in the end. So that's always a good thing. Um, everybody that is in clinical psychology picks a specialty, and my specialty is trauma and PTSD. Um, so that's you know particularly why I do what I do. And um, clinical psychology is basically means that I can provide therapy as well as um, give individuals assessments to see what kind of mental disorders they might have. Um, and this could be anything from IQ assessments or ADHD assessments or even personality assessments or anything that would basically allow us to make a diagnosis of some sort. Um, so anyways, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about trauma and we're also going to be talking about PTSD. Um, so basically what trauma is, is any kind of crazy event in your life that caused extreme stress and extremely high anxiety and emotions to come out. Um, so this could be a very big variety of things. For a lot of people it's, you know, experiencing, um, you know, a shooting of some sort or experiencing sexual assault such as rape or um, domestic violence of some kind. Um, it also can be child abuse, uh, physical or emotional um, or sexual abuse as well from any kind of adult when you're younger. And um, it can be experiencing a motor vehicle accident, experiencing any kind of accident that you've ever been in. Um, also experiencing natural disasters such as hurricanes or tornadoes or anything like that is also considered a, tra a traumatic event. Um, it also means when you've even just witnessed a traumatic event. So what happened on 9-11 is that a lot of people ended up watching the TV and seeing the planes over and over and over again run into the um, buildings. And what this ended up causing was not everybody, but it caused a vast amount of individuals to ha have PTSD um, because they were witnessing this over and over again. This also could be this could be when you witness a car accident as well or anything like that. Um, so what we found in, mul in multiple studies is that trauma usually occurs in 60% of all males over the course of their lifetime. They'll experience at least one traumatic event and 50% of females will at least experience one traumatic event. Um, so it's a very high percentage, which basically means, you know, if you're in a room with your best friend, one of you is going to experience it, um, which is obviously scary, but that's why there's a lot of us working in this particular field. Um, and then what we also know is that um, for PTSD, if a person experiences a traumatic event, usually around 6 to 8 percent of those individuals will um, be diagnosed with PTSD if they're ever seen by a mental health professional. So um, that's also very high. That's about 1 in 10 um, individuals experience PTSD. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what PTSD is. and um, so there's three different kinds of symptoms of PTSD. There's re-experiencing, which basically means having nightmares of the traumatic event or having flashbacks. And flashbacks include um, basically if you, you know, if you were raped by an individual and you were walking down the street and saw someone of that same height or weight or same facial features, you might end up having a flashback of when you were raped because this person reminds you so much of that instance. Um, so it's just very quick. All of a sudden you have this high anxiety and kind of feel like you're having the experience again. Um, another kind of symptom is called avoidance. Um, and this particular one means that you either avoid certain places, certain people, certain things 
because it reminds you of the traumatic event. So some people, when they experience a gunshot, don't want to ever hear guns again. So they'll avoid guns, they'll avoid going to places with guns. Um, others will avoid, you know, particular areas. So if they saw a car accident, they'll, they won't drive down that particular street anymore. Or people, you know, if you've experienced um, childhood sexual abuse, you might not want to be around that person. Um, and, you know, then there's also um, avoiding thoughts. So you might avoid talking about the trauma altogether because it's that traumatic to you where you feel like you can't even talk about it without getting too emotional. Um, so a lot of people avoid thoughts even of the trauma. And um, then there's hyperarousal, which means that an individual feels very, very tense and anxiety and stressed whenever they think about the trauma. Um, or they also end up having a very high startle response which means that they get scared very easily. Um, it can be um, any kind of instance, but usually they just get very scared very easily if someone tries to, you know, jump out at them. Um, or if they've experienced gunshots and they're around anything that sounds like a gun, um, fireworks going off, they might um, be, get very hyperly aroused and have a lot of anxiety and stress. Their heart rate will go up, they'll start to sweat, they'll tense. Um, so that's the third kind of symptom. So um, basically, how do we deal with PTSD? Well, um, there's a multitude of different kinds of ways to deal with PTSD um, and various different kinds of therapy, but I am prone to using one particular kind because I know that it's been proven um, very effective and I honestly think it's one of the best kinds of therapy for PTSD. Um, and that particular kind of therapy is called CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Um, so that includes basically having the individual rethink about the trauma over and over and over again so that when they think about the trauma, they think about it um, when they are at a normal heart rate and they're calm. Because the first time they think about it or talk about it, they're going to be very, very scared, very anxiety prone. But if they keep talking about it and re-experience it in many ways, um, then they will be less likely to have that reaction and therefore they're less likely to have symptoms of PTSD. Another thing that we do is also have them re-experience it um, and this is called exposure therapy. So we'll have them physically go to, you know, places that they feel are scary. So if they don't want to drive a car anymore because they experienced a car accident, we'll have them drive in a car. Um, it sounds horrible. It sounds like it's very scary, but we won't start them driving the car. We'll start them sitting in a car without the car on. Maybe the next time we'll have them start the car. The next time we'll have them drive a little bit. So it's very gradual. It doesn't all just happen one once at a time, but um, this allows them to re-expose themselves and allows them to stop avoiding what they thought was helping when it's actually harming them and causing them to have more symptoms of PTSD. Um, another thing that we teach them is called deep muscle relaxation. And this is because of the hyperarousal symptoms that they have. So we teach them how to tense their muscles and relax them after a certain amount and just very calm and relaxed so that they can understand how to do that for themselves when they're thinking about the trauma in the future or when they're re-experiencing anything that um, reminds them of the trauma. They'll be able to relax and calm down their breathing. So that's a particular kind of therapy that's very useful for people that have PTSD. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of organizations that help with individuals who have PTSD. Um, one of them is v Veterans Affairs Hospitals. That's, they're called VA hospitals and they're for individuals that have experienced combat. Um, so, you know, one of the cool things that they do to do exposure therapy, since we can't take them back to Iraq, is they created these virtual worlds. So it's almost like a virtual reality game. 
and they'll put them in it, and they have. To, it basically looks like they are on the grounds of Iraq. There will be gunshots going off and a multitude of things going on so that they can re-experience that. Um, and then there's also community mental health clinics in any kind of community, and you can go there. I could go there. Basically, anyone can go there, and it's lower cost than seeing a clinical psychologist at a private practice. Um, but that also is an option, too, and there are many different clinical psychologists all over um, different cities, especially Charlotte, um, to be able to be seen for PTSD. Um, and then there are also domestic violence shelters for individuals that have experienced domestic violence and um, need a safe place to go as well as a place to get therapy. So you don't even have to stay there. You can just receive the treatment um, as well as possibly staying there if you need to. So those are the different kinds of organizations. There are also um, some really cool ones for natural disasters. There's one called FEMA. Um, I can't really remember what it stands for, but basically they come in when there's a natural disaster or even um, something that affects a, a very big group of people, so like the gunshots in Colorado. Um, they're basically put on by Homeland Security, and it's to help individuals that have experienced this go through crisis intervention right after it happens. So right when they, those gunshots happen, a couple hours later, this, this huge group of psychologists will come in and basically debrief these individuals so that they feel like they know what's going on, know what symptoms to look for, and also know where to go for help. Um, another organization that does this is the Red Cross. Um, they work very closely with FEMA, um, and both organizations do a very good job during any kind of huge disaster that happens. Um, so that's about it. If you have any more questions, you can always email me um, or if you, you know, need any more answers about whatever is going on or if you think you have PTSD, you think someone else has PTSD, um, you can also email me as well. Um, my email is kmaxwell1987 at gmail.com. And, um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from this. And um, if you also have any questions about psychology or thinking about going into it, um, no matter what kind, you can also email me. All right, have a good day. Bye.